Hi, I'm Jason, and here are five drill press tips to make your woodworking safer, more accurate, and more enjoyable. All right, so tip number one, make sure you tighten your bit in there all the way, and here's what I mean by that. So I hand tighten the chuck, and I make sure that it's seated straight up and down in the jaws of the chuck. But the important thing to remember here is to tighten the chuck in all three holes. If I spin this chuck around, you'll see that there's more than one hole on there. And if you don't tighten all three of these, then this thing is gonna wobble loose and come out and you won't get a straight hole going up and down. So I go one, two, and it'll get tighter each time. And then on the third one, I really snug it. <laughs> and that's it. Tip number two has to do with the fence on my drill press's auxiliary table. It's very handy, but sometimes I can't get it back far enough depending on where I wanna drill the hole. So I could certainly replace it with a piece of wood and a couple of clamps, but what I find easier and more convenient is one of these clamping straight edges. It's got a movable head on the clamp. You just slide it to where you need. So in this case, I can put it all the way at the back of the table move this head and then pull down on this lever and clamp it exactly where I need it. And if I need to micro adjust it for some reason, I can just use my mallet and just give it a couple of taps wherever I need to to fine tune that fence. Works great. Tip number three has to do with the way that I like to make large mortises, which is to rough out the mortise using a Forstner bit and I make a series of overlapping holes at the depth that I need, and then I clean up the waste with a chisel. So this method works great, but there's a, a, something you should be aware of. I always like to make sure that I've got about three eighths of an inch or about a half an inch between each hole. And the reason for that is these Forstner bits have a spur on the end. And if I try to put the spur of that bit on a thin sliver of wood here, it's either going to blow out this wood and not have a place to purchase, or that bit is going to wander sort of at a diagonal, throwing off your cut. It's not the end of the world, but you're gonna feel this thing jerk and shake all over the place. So for tip number four, sometimes I wanna drill a hole with a Forstner bit, and I wanna go all the way through a thick piece of wood. But oftentimes, the Forstner bit is just too short. I can't make it all the way down to the other side. So on these Forstner bits, there is a hexagonal shank, and it's a bit of an oddball size. They call it 3 8 but I measured. This is actually 5 16 of an inch. And if you go looking for a bit extender at the home center, it's not going to fit. I know because I tried that. So I went to the local woodcraft store. They actually sell a bit extender that's made specifically for these bits. And you can get them at Rockler, too, or some other specialty woodworking suppliers. The hole is actually 3 8 of an inch, so it fits perfectly in there. And then you've got two set screws and you just use an Allen wrench and you tighten both of these down and you're able to extend the depth of your cut. And this one's four inches. They also make a 10 inch version. And I tried it, I didn't get any wobble or run out. It works perfectly. So tip number five really got me out of a bind yesterday. I needed to cut a really large hole in some thin material. This is quarter inch MDF. And I was making a router template and I did not have a Forstner bit or anything else that I could cut a really accurate hole with. So I went to the home center and I found one of these. This is an adjustable radius drill bit. Um, gonna be honest, it's a little bit sketchy to use, but you know, <laughs> it's one of those things that I don't know how you function without it or I don't know how I functioned without it until now. Basically, you set this from the tip of the bit to this cutter. That's probably about an inch and a half. And then you take a, a hex key and you tighten the set screw down like this. Sorry if I'm blocking that for the camera. And then you just chuck it in your drill press and it makes a pretty accurate cut. I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised at how well this did the job that I needed it to do. Just make sure you set your drill press on a really low speed setting. So there you go, five drill press tips for woodworking. 
Hopefully these helped you out and I'll leave some links in the descriptions below for some of the things you saw here. We'll see you soon.